Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we are looking at another hybrid uh, broadcast rig. This week, sorry for the shaky camera, we are looking at a Allen Heath SQ7, and we are pairing that via Dante um, to a native Waves rig. Um, so this is Waves Super Rack running natively on a souped up Mac mini. And we're just going to talk real quick about how I have this connected and, uh, and just kind of give you some useful tips hopefully here. Um, so first off real quick, look at the SQ and how we have things laid out on here over on the right hand side of every, uh, fader bank. We have our DCAs. So drums, electric guitar tracks, sorry, I'm trying to stabilize my hands here. Uh, band, vocals. Um, we have the room mics over here, very important for a broadcast feed. These two purple ones are our vocal verb send and delay send. So you can do ramping effects and our speech mics. Uh, the cool thing about the SQ is that we have, uh, like we've shown on some other consoles, DCA spill. So if I select the drum DCA you'll see that my channels over on the left have dropped down just to show me the drum channels. Uh, and then I can click the drum DCA at the end here to get back out. So with those groups, you have access to pretty much everything you need right away um, at one push of the button. But we also have over here on the left, some of our other important either transitionary or individual channels that we're gonna need to look at. So we have our vocals one through four, these are our singing microphones. We've got our handheld one and two, headset one and two, our speaking mics. And then these are all of our playback devices for pre-service music, video feeds, that kind of thing. So media playback and iPod. Um, now, a lot of these are stereo channels um, and we don't necessarily have to have both on here because they're linked, they're still, or ganged, as Alan Heath calls it, they're still going to um, uh, be linked, even though you only see one of them on the layer. Um, we also have our individual channels. So drums we have as a DCA over here. But we've got bass separated, electric guitar separated. Um, sorry, this may not show up on the screen here, but those say acoustic guitar. The left side of the keys, the left side of the synth rig, uh, which again are linked to the right channels of those as well. So, uh, oh, one final thing. We also have our effects returns up here. So we have a band verb return, drum verb return, vocal verb return, and delay return. So again, we have return channels up here with knobs and mute buttons. And then we have our send levels over here on every single layer. Another really helpful thing on the SQ, you got all these different layers over here. So we're looking at layer A. Um, and I've, I've left out some things like the right side of the keyboard, right side of the synth rig, that kind of thing. But the E and F layers, I always set them up so that every single input, 1 through 24, and then we've got our DCAs just like before, and then... 25 through 48 are all present. So that way, no matter what, you always have access to every single one of your channels. So that's kind of just a quick overview of how we have it set up. The big thing I want to show you guys today is how we're getting sound back and forth um, from our Waves rig up here. So first off, downstairs, there is another SQ that is our front of house SQ. Um, that the crowd is hearing that is not using waves plugins. Instead, they have the Allen Heath um, plugin expansion packs running down there. Um, but it's hooked up to a Dante card. The Dante card is feeding into this network switch that we have here. And this network switch is also connected to the Mac Mini that's on top of. Um, and uh, the broadcast SQ, and in, right now, just because we're doing a virtual sound check, that yellow cable is going off to my laptop um, just so we can feed in a source other than what's coming from downstairs. 
Now, the way audio gets through the board, so let's talk about maybe the kick drum, which is input channel three downstairs. That gets sent from front of house via Dante, Dante virtual sound card into this Mac Mini and comes up here to be processed individually if it needs. Now, we're doing most of the processing on the SQ, but if there's anything that we want to do uh, that the SQ can't do, that's where it's first getting done. So it's then sending out Dante into the SQ for broadcast. The individual channel for kick drum is then being fed into, this is the important part I want to show you guys today, one of these five groups that we have here. So obviously kick drum is going to go into drums. Um, I labeled it G drums so that I know that that's my group of drums and not my DCA of drums because they perform different functions. And here's the really cool thing that Alan Heath did a really good job on how uh, inserts work. So by going through a group, I can set up in and out ports um, for how that's processed. And because the SQ uses 48 inputs, but the Dante control can do up to 64, what I'm doing is utilizing Dante uh, 49 through 64 as my things that are sending from the console to waves and back and forth. So 49 and 50 are my main left and right for my mastering. But my drums on here, you can see they're sending out IO port 51 and 52, and they're coming back in 51 and 52. So as long as this insert button is lit up, um, then I am now using the waves for processing. So on waves, I just have a basic uh, DBX compressor and a limiter um, on that process. And so that goes out and then comes back. Now, the important trick on this is none of my individual channels go straight to the left, right. They all go to um, one of these five groups. So we've got drums, band, uh, vocals, other, which is going to be like the room mics and the speaking mics and all that good stuff. Um, and then Dubba. I've talked about Dubba in a couple of videos. That's a way of creating a false sense of stereo spread on my electric guitars. So electric guitars are in both the band group and the double group. And the reason why we did that is each one of these, so uh, each one of these goes back and forth to waves so that every channel on the board ends up getting the same amount of um, latency applied because of the round trip latency from the board to waves and then back. So everything individually comes from waves into the board and then goes back and forth through the groups. All these groups then feed into the main left, right. And that main left, right goes through as well for mastering. Um, so really, really cool trick. So you can see on here, so we got 51, 52 for drums. Band is 53 and 54, 55, 56 for vocals, so on and so forth. So we're using up to uh, channel 60 to send back and forth between waves and the console. Um, but that's really the cool trick on here that I wanted to show you guys today. If you watch my other video where I did this with the Behringer Wing, I had to do a little bit of math to try and make this work. Um, but on here, it's a little bit more simple because all these things feed up into my groups up here in waves. And then in waves, under this patch window, you can create latency groups. So I have input channels so that all my channels that are getting individual processing before initiating the board, those are all in one group. So if you do anything that, say, creates 10 milliseconds of latency on the kick, then all the channels get 10 milliseconds of latency. And then I also have a latency group called groups, which you can see at the very end there, those are all the the groups we just talked about, drums, band, vocals, other, and dubba. And then finally at the bottom there, I have a group called mastering, which is on the master, which isn't really doing anything, but it just helps me to visualize how everything's hooked up. So this guarantees that all my inputs are lined in when they hit the board, they're lined in when they come back from groups, and then they go out through the mastering. Uh, finally, that master 
comes back to the board and then is transferred from this console to the front of the house console downstairs just because that's where the video switcher is currently. So it then plugs into that. Uh, and that's really it. Uh, so again, the most important part of this video was I wanted to show you how that group processing works and how the uh, latency groups work. If you do those two together, it makes it a lot easier uh, to hook up this hybrid rig. Um, finally, I just want to mention um, the reason why I mentioned that the Waves rig was native and not through a like a SoundGrid server. One, the SoundGrid server has gone up in price a lot recently, apparently. Um, and so, two, because this is broadcast, I'm not as concerned about latency um, because, again, everything's going to be latent together. Um, but as long as we match it to our video, then the online audience isn't going to know the difference. <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to do this necessarily without a really powerful computer um, at front of house. But for what we're doing uh, in broadcast, you know, the drummer's not going to know that everything's behind because it's going to line up with his video. So, yeah. So, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I plan on doing some more SQ videos and more wing videos in the near future. Um, so, please let me know what works best for you, and I'll try to make content for you. Until next time, have a great week.